on his way home was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah, the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. And then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah, the prophet. Do you understand what you're reading, Philip asked. Why can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. This is the passage of scripture the eunuch was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearers was silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life he was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, Does that mean we choose the prophet? What about himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture. symbolize with baptism? Well, we symbolize, of course, the washing clean. So, baptism is a bit like having a bath. It's going to be a cold bath today, but we're going to go out there and we're going to stick him in the water as a symbol of being washed clean from his sins, of forgiveness and cleansing that has already happened. We're going to do it because baptism symbolizes a dying to an old way of life and a living to a new way. So we'll put him under the water and we'll bring him back up again symbolic of that new life that he has, has begun as a Christian. And it's also symbolic of the coming of the Holy Spirit in abundant measure. So we're going to sort of immerse him in water as a symbol of being immersed in God's Holy Spirit. And we'll pray that God would help him then to live in a new way by the power of his Holy Spirit. Now, I'm going to get Michael to share a few words of his testimony. And then I think Willie's going to say a few words as well. So Michael, can you tell us a little bit about how you got to this point? I'd like to thank you all for coming today in such a way. I've written down my testimony because uh, I'm not too good at the top of the top of the top. As a young child, my parents divorced and I decided my grandparents would take me. 
Uh, they, they call it. At the age of 8 or 9, I was told about Jesus at the Ellen Pentecostal Church in Clifton Tower by Charlie and May Martin. I had no trouble with believing in God and was encouraged to pray. However, by the time I was in high school, I began to be interested in other things and God seemed to fade into the background. I quickly lost interest in academic pursuits and now at the age of 14 I started to experiment with alcohol and so-called recreational drugs. This continued and escalated as I got older and I seemed to be using substances more than doing anything else. After leaving school, I had various types of employment, none of which promised anything for the future. With lack of direction, I reduced my abuse to a new level, and by 26 or so, I had completely lost any hope for being for the better. At age 27, I was introduced to heroin, and felt the drugs really helped me to work out the reality. It wasn't long before I was addicted to had to go on a methadone program. Still, I kept on using it, and it wasn't long before my mental health began to suffer. I ended up in hospital due to drug-related mental illness on three or four occasions. This became the norm for me for the next ten years or so. My relationship with my then girlfriend ended due to co-dependency and selfish behaviours. I kept on trying to get clean, but nothing seemed to work. I fell deeper and deeper into depression and social isolation, and I couldn't seem to get any clean breaks from my drug use. One day I decided to pop, pop into the church coffee shop where I met Alec Meeke who introduced me to church and the gospel of Christ. He was very kind to me and gave me a spark of hope in life. I was 39 at this time and I believed the Lord and I believed in the Lord although that's all it really was at the time. For the next 10 years or so I would periodically come to church and most of the time, most of the other time, I struggled with my addictions. Around 10 months ago I came to the end of myself. I couldn't seem to beat drugs on my own and I was still feeling very withdrawn. I kneeled next to my bed and prayed to the Lord telling him, my way and will are not working. Lord, if you will, please help me to get better and do the things you would like me to do. Since praying this prayer, my life has changed radically. Next month will mark one year of providing clean drugs to the screens at the clinic. Also, I have been sober for almost six years. I've been attending the prison <coughs> course, which has been helping me with methods that give me sensible do's and don'ts to apply to addiction. I used to have dealers' phone numbers on my phone and sometimes had to deal with dealers at my door up to three times a week. Thankfully, these things are now uh, things of the past. I find the risk of freedom very useful and can relate with other addicts in the group. I also attend new creations and have a number of good Christian friends who are helping me in my recovery. New <coughs> creations has given me Bible teaching and a comfortable place for praise and worship with like-minded people. I now consciously think about scripture and do my best to follow what I feel the Holy Spirit is showing me. I've made a good friend in Willie Borland through the Passing the Bathroom program. We enjoy time together and have some great Bible discussions. Also, I have a friend in Stephen Webster who has allowed me on occasion to help with his ministry to Basel Stainless. I enjoy this and now feel that my circumstances are far better than a lot of the school people. We do our best to pay for them and offer them soup for a bite to eat. I feel so much better today and realise the Lord Jesus is true and faithful. I couldn't have come this far on my own. I now believe that the Lord Jesus is my strength and my shield, and that is one of the reasons for my baptism today. Amen. Okay. I would just like to say, uh, great privilege to, to know Michael. And I've known Michael for about two and a half years, and in that time of friendship, it's grown steadily. We meet up twice a week and have helped each other spiritually by discussing our faith and God's word. We go to the gym regularly, but do more talking than working. <laughs> Hence the belly. <laughs> I find Michael very easy to get on with. He has a humble spirit and good discernment for the truth. It has been great joy. For the, it has been great joy to see him overcoming his addiction. And mindful is mindful to give all the credit to the Lord. Jesus said, He who overcomes will inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. So today, we are gathered together to witness Michael be baptized in obedience to God's word. Someone once said, God is most glorified when we are most satisfied with him. And I pray that this will be Michael's testimony. Lord, we do thank you for Michael's testimony. We thank you for your work in his life and for the transformation that you have begun. 
thank you that you bring to completion what you start and we pray for your continued work and thank you as well for the work of your Holy Spirit encouraging and strengthening him and I pray that you would allow him to know that in a special way just now as we baptize him please be glorified in his life uh, today and in the days ahead Amen. 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 So we're going to ask a few questions. Do you want to get uh, a layer off or whatever? Yeah, yeah we'll go 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 and do that. <laughs> Jesus Christ as your Saviour and Lord. Yeah. And will you, with the help of the Holy Spirit, seek to live a life that is pleasing and glorifying to Him? Yes, I will. Okay, so let's go and get some water. Sorry, I'm done, mate. Hey. Hey. Hey, he's go. Hey, father. Go, oh, mate. Go. <laughs> on your profession of faith and at your request, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> God, thank you, Jesus. Who's got the hot water bottles? <laughs> Right, Ruth, can you read for him then? Oh, I love the... I love the game. I love the new one. Oh, okay. so now got a of the Lord has given these words to me for you today, and they're from Psalm 119, one of the stanza sections, starting at verse 129. Lord, your statutes are wonderful, therefore I obey them. The unfolding of your words gives light. It gives understanding. I open my mouth and pant, longing for your commands. Turn to me, Lord, and have mercy on me, as you always do to those who love your name. Direct my footsteps according to your word. Let no sin rule over me. Redeem me from human oppression that I may obey your precepts. Make your face shine on your servant Michael. Teach him your decrees. Amen. 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 So can a few people gather around? Michael, if you come a few the case forward there, stand a bit further forward. That's it, right. If you want to pray for him, gather around, stick your hand on the shoulder and pray.